In this video, I want to show you a really quick and simple technique, which is really fun to do, actually. It combines Sharpie marker pen with watercolour paint. And then working out in the open air, I'm able to very quickly capture a scene of two red cattle lying down within a Devon landscape with trees in the background. So really great being out in the open air and working in this fun, expressive way. Hi everyone, I'm Mike. And this is the Sunday Art Show. Hi guys, I'm back at the field and as you can see the cows are coming in to greet me. Unfortunately I've already done my paintings of these guys, they're actually way off in the far distance when I arrive. Uh, but you can see they're really beautiful animals. So actually I might do a few quick sketches now that I'm here. Um, that could be cool. So the first day that I went to this field, um, it was actually a really bright sunny day as you can see here. And luckily the cattle were really close to the footpath, lying down and standing in lots of different positions. So I grabbed my A4 pad of mixed media paper and my black Sharpie marker pen. And what I'm doing here is I'm just selecting two of the steer, so I'm not going to try and capture the entire herd and I've picked two of the animals that are lying down. So first of all, I put down the outline of the animals, just really simply. And then the next thing I'm doing is adding in any cast shadows. So because we've got strong sunshine today, you can see the animal here on the right, its head is casting a wonderful shadow across its body. And then having done that, I add shading across the, the rest of the body. You can see on the left cow, on the left steer I've got some curved lines and some straight lines to kind of convey the different surfaces I'm depicting. Now you can see the cattle are starting to move now so you've got to be pretty quick when you do this and that's why I haven't done any detail or anything like that. Once the animals are in place I then put them within their environment by just very loosely capturing the shape of a few of the distant trees and popping in a couple of horizon lines. You can see the cattle, as always, you know, they quite often come up to the fence to see what's going on. So I think I mentioned in a, a video a few weeks ago, painting cattle, it's a really good one to have a go at because they tend to come and see what you're up to. So they're generally fairly close. So there's the finished sketch. Now, I didn't do the painting on this day because I wanted to preserve that sketch. So that's up on my website. But I came back later on. So we're back to the present day. So I'm back at the same field, but this time I've got my watercolour kit. This is just a standard Windsor & Newton watercolour kit. And I'm starting off, as you can see, it's not quite as sunny as it was before, but that's okay. You know, it's kind of interesting to me to capture this scene in two different, on two different days. So the drawing was done on a bright sunny day, but today it's a little bit more overcast. So I've just swept in a wash of blue there for the sky, and then I've lifted some of that out with a paper towel to begin to capture some of the clouds in the sky. Now having put that kind of grey blue down, I'm now coming with a little bit more of a vibrant blue over the top and I'm just rolling around synthetic brush across the sky to make sure the mark making I use is kept nice and loose. So I want to, I want this uh, painting to be come to come into shape quite rapidly but I want to keep things nice and loose and make use of the expressiveness of watercolour. So I'm using that same brush rolling technique for the foliage of the distant trees. And I've changed the colour again now, so it's a, you know, it's a little bit of a bluey green now. Now the board I'm using here is just fixed into a Windsor & Newton field easel. And I'm able to prop that up on the fence, you can see there, and then my right hand is just simply holding the bottom of the easel. And it works surprisingly well. And of course you don't have to worry about your, your easel falling over or anything like that. Now having got the cool colours in for the distance in the sky, I'm now sweeping some warmer earthy brown colour across the field. And all the while I'm still using this same round brush. Now what I'm doing here is just lifting out some of that colour where the cattle are. So I wanted the sweep, sweeping brush stroke. I didn't want to paint round the cattle, I wanted to just paint through them. 
I'm doing the same here with an even brighter yellow. Um, but then the paper towel just lifts off some of the watercolour on the cattle themselves because I'm going to be going back in to paint those cattle in just a little bit. But now that the first set of washes have dried for the distant trees, I can now add in a little bit of texture by just tapping the brush with a slightly warmer green and then keep going with that green for the background of the field. Now the cattle today, I don't know if you can even see them, but they were right off in the distance there at the back of the field. They do come closer as the day progresses though, so that's kind of cool. And they've got this lovely rust red uh, colour. I think these are red pole cattle. So I'm beginning by putting in kind of a light orangey brown, and just really just filling in without too much concern about brush stroke direction, uh, the drawing of the cattle that I've done so far. Because the Sharpie marker pen puts down a permanent line, I don't have to worry at all about the paint displacing the drawing that I've done already. So, so that's really cool when you're working outdoors. You know, I can just put washes of colour across my drawing and, and know that the drawing is going to remain intact. So the first wash has been done on the cattle, and I continued some of that colour for the foreground, but I want to get you know, a little bit more of this deeper red that you just saw on the hide of the steer there. So having put in, what I did with the first wash on, on the cattle was really the highlight colour. So now I'm coming in with more of a mid-tone, which is hopefully closer to the colour you can see on screen now. And as I'm doing this, I can paint over the shadows and some of the Sharpie marker line work that I did, that's going to show through and give a little more texture to the watercolour washes. But I can also add areas of mid-tone here and there by painting over the highlight colour. So for example on the ears of the right hand steer. Now I need a little bit more texture on the foreground field so I'm coming in with a flat brush now just to change my mark making a little bit. And when we look at the field you can see there are areas of bare earth, dry grass, lush green grass, there are flowers, there are areas where the light is catching the field rather more strongly than others. But we'll come back to that in a moment. Just added a deeper brown there to capture some of the darker shadows on the, on the cattle. Now the background trees have dried and so I want to just add a little bit more shadow, you know, a little bit more definition to those background trees. Because while they are off in the distance, they're not so far away that we can't see any detail. So I'm coming in with sort of a darker purple here and the round brush is great because I can switch to the point like I just did then to put in a few tree trunks or branches but use the brush on its side to you know add just these textural random marks. And of course the round brush tends to hold a lot of water so it holds a lot of watercolour paint so you can kind of keep going with it for quite a while. So I'm using a similar technique to kind of embed the cattle in, into the grass of the field because obviously when they, when they lie down in the grass they kind of sink in a little bit and kind of move the grass around. So we don't want them, we don't want them to feel that they're sitting on a, on a hard tabletop. We want them you know, to feel that they're sitting within the grass itself. And I'm continuing with that shadow colour. You can see you can get lots of different levels of transparency, and lots of different mark making as well. So quick wispy bits like I'm doing here. And you can kind of tease out the edges of some of the broader brush strokes that you've put down. So this is why watercolour is so expressive, or one of the reasons. Um, you can move the paint around while it's still wet with little flicks of the brush. And, you know, have a lot of fun, really. You can just kind of see what you can come up with. Hopefully still representing what you're drawing, but doing it in a little bit of an abstract way and certainly a very expressive way. So... The cow, this is one of the best compliments I've had for my artwork. The cows uh, think it's uh, so such a good painting that uh, they, they want to taste it. So you can't ask for a much better end to a day out in the field painting away. So always stand back from the work to see how it's gone. But there's the finished painting photographed properly. As always, I'll pop a uh, link to the finished painting on my website if you want to get a closer look at that. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little trip out into the countryside with me using Sharpie marker pen and watercolour paint. 
As always, please remember to subscribe and please let me know if you've got any questions. I'm always happy to answer those. Thanks again for watching.